we live? Uh, we, I think we are. Let me check my, uh, there I am. Okay. Got it. Welcome everybody. Yep. We got sound. We're good. Okay. So we'll, uh, welcome everybody to the T350 show. Uh, we'll let uh, the audience build here a little bit. A couple people are popping in. Um, you know, last week we sat here and talked about how beautiful the weather was and it was 70 degrees and sunny and today it's 33 and snowing. <laughs> yes. Winter has arrived, but, uh, you know, it's not, it's not such a bad thing. We expect it here in Northeastern Ohio this time of year, right? It's, it's normal. And what's that? How's your football team doing? How's my football team doing? We're nine and oh, one another one. And we got the Jacksonville Jaguars this week, who have won one game so far this year. So, looking like a 10 and 0 start to the season for the Steelers. <laughs> they got four or five uh, teams with winning records though coming up in the last six games. So I expect them to lose a couple. Terry Bradshaw was on TV the other day talking about an undefeated season, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know about that. Even if they go into that last game with everything wrapped up, they're not going to play the starters. That's how it always goes. And, yeah, we, there has been an easy schedule. I ain't, I'm not denying that, but that schedule wasn't made when the teams stunk. That schedule was made last year. You know, the fact that the teams stink this year, well, that's tough. <laughs> that's the way it works. Yeah, Ravens were 14 and 2 last year. Now they're 6 and 3. Right? So, you never know. You get you get the schedule you get, right? Lisa Blala, yeah. That's coming from a Browns fan with, <laughs> with some sour grapes. You can get to play them one more time this year and spank them again too. Uh, so yeah, like we were talking about winters here and hunting seasons just around the corner, uh, about a week and a half and a little over, uh, we'll be getting ready to start deer hunting here in Ohio with our guns. I can't wait. Uh, never hunted deer with an AR before, and this is going to be my first year and, uh, hunting with an AR and I'm excited. I'm excited to use my 350. So, uh, I, it'll it'll be tempting to not I, i'm gonna want to get a deer right away you know so it's going to be tempting to the first thing i see i'm gonna want to, and i'm gonna have to hold off because i always like to wait for a nice buck at least for a little while i don't want to shoot the first thing that comes by you know i always wait for a nice buck but i did that last year and i didn't see anything the whole season for and i ended up getting a doe in the second season because time was running short and i needed some meat in the freezer <laughs> so that's probably what will happen again this year but you never know, right? You got to be out in the woods to see them. You got to be out in the woods to get them. Hi, Marcy. And my wife is still still running her gums. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. I won't initiate a Steelers conversation next week. <laughs> All right. So uh, last week we talked about uh, spare parts and the things you would want to take to the range or to a training session or even hunting or whatever it might be. Things that uh, commonly break on your, <laughs> things that commonly break on your rifle and uh, the things you want to have in a kit that you can fix on the fly. So uh, if you didn't get to catch that show, you can check it out. It's down in the feed or it'll be popping up here on YouTube in the next day or two on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to go to the YouTube channel and, uh, you know, subscribe to that. Uh, if you miss this, you'll get a notification uh, that those when those pop up. If you hit that little bell, you'll get notified when the new videos pop up there. And we put other stuff up there, too. Some promotional videos and some different stuff. Uh, Going to be some shooting videos coming out here where we were blowing some stuff up and shooting some bowling balls and bottles and watermelons and all kinds of crazy stuff. We were having fun that day. Um so uh, like and share the shows, get them out there for everyone to see, invite your friends to join the architect group so they can see what's going on here. Um, so uh, I, I teased it a little bit last week, excuse me. Um, we haven't done a giveaway since Labor Day 
and uh, we're going to have a big Black Friday giveaway. Uh, always, a, always a big um, shopping and gift giving, time, gift buying time. So uh, we're going to give away a, a complete full build rifle kit, one of our complete full build 16 inch rifle kits, minus a lower. We don't sell the lowers. You got to provide your own lower. You go to your FFL dealer and get your background check and and do all the paperwork and and the legal legalistic stuff there. Get your lower and uh, you can get a full build rifle kit from us. Uh, the Maggie's going to be putting up the uh, particulars of that here on the Architect Group and the BYOAR page. What it takes to get into that drawing, and uh, we'll do a Black Friday somewhere right around Black Friday, either just before or just after it, we'll draw for that. Um, I'll be off the week after Thanksgiving. I'll be out chasing deer around the woods, so somebody else might have to take control of that for me. But uh, either way, we're going to give away a full build rifle kit. And uh, basically, mine, you know, we don't, this isn't the stock you get with that, and this isn't the upper you get with that. But, you know, you, you're going to get the 15 inch handguard, you're going to get a, a muzzle device, you're going to get everything you need except for the lower. It's about a $550, $560 value we're going to be giving away. It's our, our biggest giveaway so far. So watch for that coming up on the, on the uh, BYOAR page in the Architect Group. Uh, last week, we uh, our free our deal of the week on the website was you get a free muzzle brake with any handguard purchase. And uh, this week's deal, since we're talking about iron sights and flip up sights and 45 degree offsets and witnesses, co witnesses, and all that good stuff, we're going to give away uh, a free set of iron sights with any rifle or kit, rifle or pistol kit that you purchase on the website. So you, you purchase a rifle or pistol kit, you get the $35 iron sights free. So um, that segues kind of right into what we're talking about this week, and that is iron sights on uh, 45 degree offsets. And so um, iron sights, I guess, is kind of a, a little bit of a misnomer because so many of them are polymer nowadays. Uh, you know, Magpul makes fantastic... Uh, backup sites that are polymer uh, probably one of the you know premier ones in the in the industry is the Magpul MBUS sites um, they they lock in really nice I don't have a set here with me I I have a set on another gun at home and I forgot to grab it I was grabbing different guns to bring in this morning and I forgot to grab that one um, but Magpul makes a great set of flip-up sites um, you know they're about 90 to 100 dollars for the set, uh, you know, any, anywhere from 40 to $50 for each piece front and rear. Um, but they're, they are, you know, they are, they are what they are. They're great. You know, um, when you're buying iron sights, uh, especially flip ups, um, you want to look for pretty decent quality. Um, you'll get a lot of stuff that's made in China that, um, in fact, I brought these in to show you. I got—I forget where I got these. I'm not sure if I won these or if I bought these or I, I don't even remember where I got them. And they're garbage. They are absolute junk. Um, you can see when they're flipped up and locked in how much movement these things have, right? Back and forth, front and rear. I mean, how are you ever going to maintain any kind of accuracy with something that has that much wiggle and wobble to them and you know uh these are just they're they're probably not worth the 20 15 or 20 bucks that they cost to be honest with you um and there's some polymer ones out there uh when you're buying um if, especially like the magpul uh look for knockoffs there's subtle ways that you can tell the difference between them um if you go online and google uh Magpul M bus knockoffs. They'll, there's some places you can go to research that stuff, and they'll tell you little differences to look for and to uh, see what the difference is between the foreign-made stuff that, excuse me, claims to be Magpul and true Magpuls. So just be aware of that. And uh, you know, these uh, 30. Uh, this is another set. So um, this is the set we sell with our rifle kits and we get these from Ozark armament. And I do believe they're foreign sourced. Um, 
but they're pretty decent quality for foreign source. You can see they they move back and forward a little bit. You know, they have a little bit of give to the spring, but there's just barely any movement side to side. And that's really what concerns me. You know, the the back the up and down, you know, they're made to flip up and down. So they you know, they move, right? And when they lock in, they move a little bit back and forth. It's the side to side that really bothers me in these for accuracy. So these are about, you know, $30, $35 for a set. And they're probably about the bare minimum that you really want to, you know, um, there's some 12 and $15 plastic sets out there that are absolute garbage as well. You know, they don't tighten up They're where they don't sit flat and they rock back and forth. Um, you know, if you're going to buy a set of iron sights, you know, at a minimum, spend 30, 40, 50 dollars. And if you want something that's really good and reliable, spend push, you know, you're pushing a hundred dollars for something that's really good. Uh, yeah, the UTG low profile sights are decent. They, they are good. Um, they don't have a lot of wiggle to them. And I believe they're foreign sourced as well. And, you know, you, again, they're that 30 to $50 range that is kind of the bare minimum, right, of what you want to have or what you want to do. Um, if you can, if that's what you can afford, that's what you get, you know. Um, we're, we're not here to knock anybody for what they put on their rifle. But uh, just know that, you know, $10, $15 iron sights really ain't worth the 10 or 15 bucks that you've spent on them. You're, you're, you're not going to be happy. Let me put it that way. You're not going to be happy with what you get. Um, so we, uh, let me see, uh, offset 45s, right? So these are offset 45s. And like I said, they're pretty much garbage because they got too much wiggle to them. This is a gun I built for my daughter for Christmas a couple years ago and these are also from Ozark Armament but they're solid okay these offset 45s if you look at them they're one piece construction they don't flip up these things are just rock solid right there's you know you can right you can bang on these things they ain't going nowhere they ain't going to hurt them and the whole idea with offset 45s is you know, being able to transition from optics to a slight 45 degree cant and being right there without having to move your head. That's what you, you don't want to have to be, you know, okay, I'm in my scope and then uh, I'm trying to find, you want a, a smooth transition, right? You want to be able to just rotate this gun and you see, I didn't move my head. I got good sight picture in my scope and I just rotate and I got great sight picture in my irons. Everything is right there. And you can do that with uh, your cheek. Um, you know, if you need a little cheek comb, like on the Luth AR, if you got to li lift your cheek up and get a bigger, higher cheek weld, uh, maybe you got to get some higher scope rings. If your scope is sitting too low and your head's way down here and you find you're having to lift your head up for your irons, well, then maybe you need to put a, a small riser underneath your scope mounts and lift your scope up a little bit so that you're looking up higher, right? And this. So that's the idea between these two is you want to be able to transition without having to try to find your sight picture. Just flip, bang, it's right there. So you can do, again, you know, moving your scope up and down to do that because these are pretty well locked in. Um, you're not going to be able to move those at all. So you just play with the height of your scope so that you get the consistent cheek weld and the sight picture so that when you flip, everything is right there. Uh, so one thing with iron sights and a red dot scope you hear guys talking about is co-witness. What is co-witness? Okay. I didn't, I, I didn't understand it at first when I got into this and talking to some guys and then doing some reading about it. So, um, I got a little description here. There's two kinds of co-witness. There's absolute co-witness and the lower one third co-witness. And again, it all has to do with the height of your optic over the top of the bore so what you've got is you're looking through the iron sights okay and you're using your red dot at the same time so i'm going to turn this red dot on and i've got a, a vortex strike fire here 
okay? So what you want to do first, before you even turn it right, you want to sight your iron sights in first, okay? So when you look through this for an absolute co-witness, what you're seeing is you're looking at your iron sights and your red dot is right at the top of your post, of your front post. Um, and I've got a little illustration here. I know you won't be able to see it through my setup here, but this is what we call absolute co-witness, right? You're looking through, this is your red dot. Here's your dot. These are your iron sights that you're looking through the aperture. Here's your front post. You want the red dot right there on the top of the post, okay? So what you do is you sight in your irons first, you get a good uh, grouping with your irons, and then you turn your red dot on, and then using your adjustments on your red dot, you just dial that dot down to where it sits right on top of that post. And what that also, also does, excuse me, I'm try hard, trying to talk with my cheek welded into this thing and I bit my lip. <laughs> so when you don't have a consistent sight picture, the dot will swing around in there. The dot can move around. Now, modern day red dots are pretty much parallax free so that when you're moving around, the dot is still on target. So you don't have, you know, unless you have huge amounts of movement, you know, which you're not going to have because you have a very small opening in the red dot to begin with. You're not going to have these huge where your face is way up here, right? But there is a small amount of parallax there. And what this does is putting that red dot in co-witness with the front sight like that, it gives you a consistent sight picture and a consistent cheek weld. You're coming to the same place every time. The gun's not cocked this way, that way. You're holding it just consistently and in the same place. Your face is going into the same place every time, and that's crucial to accuracy. So when they talk about lower one-third co-witness, um, this takes a little more getting used to and a little more training because you do have to move your head with the lower one-third. So what happens with the lower one third, and uh, so to to get the to get this sight picture, you would need to put this red dot up on a riser, typically an 830 riser. Um, will get you this lower one third co-witness, right? So you've got your iron sights down here, and you've got your red dot up here. So you can use your red dot and your battery goes dead, your red dot breaks, whatever, for some reason, you've still got your backup iron sights, and it's just a matter of, okay, you're shooting your red dot, you're shooting your red dot, oh, my red dot died, all you gotta do is shift your head down, literally, this much, okay, and you're into your iron sights. Okay. It takes a little practice, a little getting used to, the transition of it, but um, it's just, you don't have as much in your way here okay which is nice when you're using a red dot the advantage of a red dot is to be able to have both eyes open and quick target acquisition and when you have an absolute co-witness you lose a little bit of that because you got all this kind of stuff in your way and you're trying to focus through three things at one time you're trying to focus through a, the back aperture the front sight pin and the red dot and then whatever your target is you're actually trying to incorporate four things here with this you've eliminated, okay? This, you're only trying to focus on the target and the red dot. This, you're trying to focus on the rear aperture, the front pin, and the target, okay? So you've started to eliminate some variables with the lower one-third co-witness. And I love a red dot just for that quick target acquisition and being able to have both eyes open. Um, I had surgery on my right eye years ago from a accident and it's a little hard for me to use iron sights i talked about this last week i can do it i just can't do it fast um, it takes me a second to look through the aperture find this find the target find the front pin find the target and and feel like i'm on target because i don't have the up close vision that i should have i had cataract surgery and i have 
bifocals in one eye. Well, I actually have bifocals in both eye now that I've gotten old, but <laughs> I used to have bifocals only in one eye, and it was weird because you'd, you'd have to be looking. It, it, it just caused me to have issues. It's gotten better, actually, as I've gotten older because now I need bifocals for both eyes. Um, and the last thing, I, I know I showed you guys this a little bit last week. Um, to alleviate my issue with iron sights, and being able to uh, quick target acquisition, I actually went to this setup on my 350 where I've got my Vortex scope that has, I got the V-Bright reticle in here, so it's got the red dot if I need it for low light conditions, right? And then I've got an offset holographic. I put an uh, offset 45 degree on here, and then I attached a holographic sight to that, okay? And again... You'll see I've got risers, right? I put the 830 risers on here to get my scope up. One, to make sure it cleared my gun. And two, so that when I've got this sight picture and I'm right here, I turn and my red dot is right there. I don't have to lift my head. I'm not searching for it. It's right there, okay? So, and like I was talking last week here in Ohio, we do a lot of deer drives, uh, eight or nine of us get together and we'll, we'll hunt wood lots and four or five guys go stand at the end of the wood lot and four or five guys push the deer out of the wood lot. And you end up with uh, sometimes close shots, you know, a deer will jump up 20 yards in front of you and turn around and look at you. Um, you, you end up with those really close shots sometimes or moving shots where a scope isn't always an optimal, uh, isn't the optimal thing to use you know at 20 yards you're you know it's so magnified in that you're searching and so okay where is it where is it oh there it is right and it's already too late with the red dot you know you're both eyes open you're acquiring your target you're putting your red dot on it and you you know it just a great system for hunting so and i got uh there's a 200 200 ish dollar vortex scope there and i probably got i think i paid 50 60 bucks total for the holographic sight and the offset 45 so i'm really excited to try it can't wait for hunting season a couple weeks and i hear great things about this 350 legend round for hunting i know it did a number on the pigs down in texas so i can't wait to see what we can do with some deer with it there's three of us in our group that now have 350s that are going to be hunting with them so we'll have some uh if i can if i'm somewhere where there's a signal we'll we'll try to do some live videos from out in the field and uh get you guys involved in what we're doing out there a little bit and having some fun so uh, i won't be here like i said that week uh maybe matt will be in here talking about the ar-10 he's building or something but uh, we'll, get, we'll get somebody in here doing something for you. So uh, that's all I got on iron sights. Um, again, you know, um, you, you buy what you buy, right? Everybody buys what they can afford. But it's one of those deals where, you know, for $15, $10, $15, $20, you're going to get, you get what you pay for. Uh, you know, you're going to want to spend $30, $40, $50 on a decent set of irons. And if you want a good set, you're going to spend $100. And I've seen irons, you know, Diamondback make some irons and different companies. They're pushing $200. But they are, I mean, when they lock in, you know, they don't move. They don't budge. They are rock solid and they are accurate. And you're, you're, getting, you're getting what you pay for. So that's all I got on iron sights this week. Um, offset 45s, co-witnesses. Uh, you know, anybody has any questions, feel free to hit me up and hit some of the guys up. Uh, Ken and Russ and all them guys in the group are really knowledgeable about this kind of stuff too. So there's a bunch of guys in there you can hit up if you're not sure and you want to. You need some more information, want some more information. Don't be afraid to ask. There's a bunch of great guys in that group, in the architect group that are always glad to help out. Uh, next week. We're going to talk about sighting in new optics or sights, how to use a laser bore sighter, um, how to dial in a scope. Uh, I, I've found a couple of really easy ways to do some bore sighting, whether it's with a laser bore sight or uh, through the muzzle or through the barrel uh, bore sight, the old-fashioned way, and then dialing in a scope. Um, 
you know, I can usually, if, if I'm on the paper, I can dial a scope in within about three shots. As long as I'm getting a good group with the first three shots, I'll dial it in. The next, the fourth and fifth shot are going to be <laughs> right where I want them to be. And I'll explain how that works. It's really pretty simple. But uh, don't forget about the deal this week. You get these uh, free iron sights with any rifle or kistel, kistel, pistol kit purchase. And uh, we'll see you all next week. And thanks for joining us. Glad to see you all here. And remember, you don't have to be an expert to build your own AR to upgrade it or maintain it. We're here to help you do that. Thank you.